We want to build an alliance with, uh, with Africa based on Africa's own priorities. So this is the starting point. And as we said, we want to promote uh, trade and integration within Africa. So this is clear. Of course, to boost trade and investment between Africa and Europe, and to see Africa integrated in the global trade and the global economy. So this, as, as we see. So we, um, we believe that the APAS are the short term. So the sh on the short term, we are very much committed to the effective implementation of the APAS. But we believe that APAS and CFTA are not in contradictions, are complementary, will coexist. So we can expect APAS and CFTA to coexist, let me say, for years like Rex agreement will coexist. We are not, I, I think I will I will speak under the, the control of prudence. CFTA is not going to cancel whatever agreement exists uh, in African countries. So we are talking about um, agreements that will coexist. We also believe, so we are not talking about building blocks for APAS. So for us, Rex, uh, we understand very well our building blocks of the CFTA agreement. APAS, we do not consider building blocks, but we, we believe that through the APAS, we also, um, let's say that somehow, thanks to the APAS, we also build some capacity, capacity in terms at least of negotiations of some African countries. So we believe that APAS are also somehow useful for the, 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 the effective implementation of the CFTA. So we see, we see them uh, coexisting. We see them as a short-term priority to go for the uh, effective implementation of the APAS. Jean, do you agree? What do you think about coexistence? Well, I don't think there's a contradiction between the EPAS and the AFCFTA itself as a free trade agreement. Um, of course, uh, in, in the, the agreement, uh, the AFCFTA agreement, there is this ambition for an African customs union. This, of course, would create some, some complications in terms of, uh, well, it, firstly, it would create the opportunity for a continent-to-continent -to -continent, uh, free trade uh, agreement between, between the, the AFCA, AFCFTA collective and the EU. Um, but we're De years, if not decades, away from being ready for that. Um, there is no inherent contradiction. I caught a bit of the the earlier session with with David Luca discussing um, EPAs. I think it was with him discussing EPAs and and um, the AFCFTA. Uh, to me, there are many examples of, of countries belonging to more than one free trade agreement. I mean, you know, to be honest, for many African countries, it, it makes sense to belong to more than one uh, free trade agreement because you don't want to lock yourself into only supplying, you know, only having prefer preferential access to one market. The world is increasingly moving towards, um, you know, sort of groups of, of PTAs or preferential trade agreements and being locked out of those can be very, very detrimental to your developmental prospects. So to me, uh, it's not a contradiction to have to be party to the EPAs and to be party to the AFCFTA, at least as a free trade agreement. Now, there are uh, other technical issues within the EPAs that can absolutely be causing some discomfort on the African side, some issues. I mean, things around, for example, um, in the, the Ghana interim EPA with the EU, I believe there's, a, um, there's no uh, MFN clause. So essentially, if Ghana uh, offers, uh, if, if Ghana ratifies and implements the AFCFTA, it, uh, it will have to liberalize 90% initially and eventually 97% of its trade from the rest of, of, of the AFC uh, state parties. And by implication through its, its uh, signature and ratification of the interim EPA, will have to offer that access to the EU as well, which is a lot higher than what is intended under the, the EPA. So I, I, I'm not fully sure of all the legal implications. If I haven't followed it through from the beginning, but this has certainly created a lot of unease around, you know, is are the EPAs, are specific technical clauses within the EPAs creating some sort of barrier to regional integration in Africa? And there are other examples around this. On the flip side, uh, you'll often hear European um, officials, representatives talk about the, the beneficial. So, uh, you know, um, the I think most of the EPAs contain, or most if not all contain some form of, of, of 
accumulation of rules of origin, which essentially means that uh, if you as uh, South Africa are exporting to the EU under a SADC EPA, a product that was partly produced in another African country that's not party to your EPA, it can still benefit from, from uh, preferential access under that EPA because of this accumulation clause. It's a very technical issue, but essentially the idea behind this is that it, it helps to create a kind of uh, de facto regional integration of value chains, even uh, without an, an agreement between all the, the countries involved. So there are, there are pros and cons, but the short answer to, to your question is I don't think there's an inherent contradiction between EPAs and the AFCFTA, although there are technical issues that need to be looked at and, and, and should be addressed to, to kind of improve the coherence between these two regimes. Stefan, what do you think? Is there a contradiction or not? Well, I think uh, Sean is quite right. Um, the EPAS will be there for quite a, quite a long time. Um, we should use the APAS as they are there um, for the time being, learn from the APAS um, what has worked well, um, what did not work so much, um, what are the do's and don'ts in trade. Um, and in a certain way, the APAS probably helped to build capacity uh, for trade regulatory processes um, on the African continent. Um, so yes, we have to live with the APOS for quite a while. And I think the political perspective in a long run, and Sean underlined it will be a long run, um, might be a comprehensive continent to continent free trade area between both continents, which would be extremely interesting in our perspective. And yes, that would be perhaps a way out. Prudence, what do you think? How helpful are APOS? Uh, well, um, uh, first of all, I can say that APAs have woken up um, African countries to a competitive market, um, which to some extent is a good wake up call for them. Uh, because if they have been investing in their technical infrastructure standards um, and the quality of products to supply the European market, then um, the same infrastructure can be used to also produce for AFCFTA market. I think on that side, um, it's, it's a positive um, aspect that APA could have brought to, 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 to the success of the AFCFTA, preparing the ground uh, for countries to supply the market. Um, but with regard to um, competition, um, of course, that can be seen as a threat um, if we believe that European products will be much more sophisticated than product from, uh, from within the continent. Um, maybe the FCFT will just uh, have to create a uh, more favorable uh, trade environment for African products if they have to find a market on the continent vis-a-vis um, -vis, uh, the products that are produced from Europe. Uh, there is one, uh, one provision on, in the rules of origin, which I think uh, should be used by African countries. Uh, th there is a provision on, on, on accumulation, the principle of accumulation, uh, which means that any country, any producer from Africa can outsource um, raw materials from all the 55 uh, African Union members then come up with a product that will qualify uh, to be um, African product that can be traded duty-free uh, within the FCFTA market. I think if they try to look at that aspect, ensure that they can use all available resources from the continent to produce quality products, then the products can be more competitive within the FCFTA than products coming from outside the continent. Uh, the other aspect, which I think is very important again, um, African countries have entered um, into agreement with Europe in different uh, institutional frameworks. Some have entered into agreement on bilateral basis individually, others have done so as regions, as regional economic communities. And I believe uh, that all products coming from Europe 
will find their destination in Africa to some extent, of course, reducing the share of the market, but they will not enjoy the right of free circulation across the, uh, across the continent because it's not a customs territory. So they will only be uh, produced for specific destination where they have agreement with specific countries. And I think there is a lot, there's a lot of potential for African producers to see in Africa rather than fearing uh, for, from competition of um, outside market. Mm -hmm.